All right, we're going to look at a very special application of colligative properties, and that is to use colligative properties to determine the molecular mass. Knowing the molecular mass of a compound, for example, an unknown compound, is a very important thing for, for chemists and oftentimes biologists. Uh, and the problem that we're going to look at is from your study guide is to find the molecular mass of an unknown compound, in this case, a hormone. A hormone would be a, a large, uh, probably protein, a bio a biochemical. Uh, what we would do as a chemist or biologist would be, if we don't have any uh, special equipment like a mass spectrometer that could determine this uh, more readily, we could use colligative properties. We would dissolve a given amount of this unknown solid uh, into a solvent and then we would record the freezing point and we would compare the freezing point of that solution to the normal freezing point of the solvent. Here is some specifics of the example from the study guide. So the mass of the unknown is given as 0.546 grams. We're going to dissolve this into a solvent, uh, benzene in this case, and we mass out the sample of benzene as 15 grams. We look up the normal freezing point, or actually we measure the freezing point of the solution, and it turns out that is 5.26 degrees Celsius. So we have our benzene as a liquid. We've measured uh, the, the solid. We've placed this solid into the benzene as the solvent. We stirred it up, put a thermometer in there, had a process by which we cooled it, and we re recorded at what temperature this solution froze. And again, it froze at 5.26 degrees. We look up the normal uh, freezing point of this of benzene and find that it's 5.50. So indeed, the freezing point was lowered by the addition of a solute, and that's one of the properties that we have learned. We look up the freezing point constant, the KFP for benzene. It is shown here. And we're going to need all these values in our calculation. So with this information, what we're going to do is it's going to require a, a series of steps. Uh, step one, we're going to rearrange our equation that we've seen. Looks like this. Realizing we're trying to find the molecular mass. Now that's what we have to keep in mind, the big picture. We're, going to, we're trying to find the molar mass of this unknown. And remember, molar mass is the mass per mole of a substance. So that's going to be kind of our, our final calculation. Well, got to do some work before we get there. But ultimately, we need to find the mass of this unknown substance per mole. In this case, I know the change in temperature. I can find that out from the data. I know the freezing point, and I, there's a way I can figure out what the value for I is. To get molecular mass, we're some, at some point we have to work with moles. Molality is a way that can get me to the value of figuring out how many moles I have. So what we're going to do is rearrange this equation and solve for molality. That is our step one. So it would look like this. So molality is equal to the change in temperature of the freezing point. Now remember it normally freezes at 5.5 degrees and in solution in this situation it froze below that so if I subtract that I can get the change in temperature of the freezing point. I, the value for I will be 1. This wasn't explicitly given but it's a molecular compound uh, generally that information would be given. If it's a molecular compound it doesn't break into ions so it is a non-electrolyte, so the I value is 1. And the, delta, the freezing point constant for benzene is 5.12 degrees Celsius per molal. Again, that information has to be available, or you can look it up. 5.12 degrees Celsius per molal. So degrees Celsius cancels out with this degree Celsius. And the value, the unit will come out is molal. And we plug all that in, we get a value of 0 
molal. So we, now we know the concentration of the solution. Step one is done. Next, we know that molality is moles of solute per kilogram of solvent. Well, in this case, I just calculated molality and I'm given the kilograms of the solvent in the problem. So this again is the solute. So I can rearrange this and solve for mol uh, moles of the solute, which is the unknown substance. So moles of the unknown would be the molality, which I've calculated in the first step. kilograms of the solvent was given in the problem, 15 grams of, of benzene. I change that to kilograms. And I multiply this out. Molality cancels. Um, sorry, molality is moles. Let me, instead of putting the small m there, to make our units work out, we'll put moles per kilogram because that's what molality is. Very important point there. If I, you saw me in come to a point where the units weren't going to cancel and I recall that molality is actually moles per kilogram. So now, if you notice, kilograms come, cancel out and the only unit left is moles and that's what we we're after. This calculation comes out to be 10 to the negative 4 moles. Again, that is the, represents the moles of the unknown. Now, we simply determine the molar mass because again molar mass is the grams per mole. So in this case grams we look at the problem it was given we measured out 0.5 in the problem it said 0.546 grams of the unknown hormone in this case was measured out and dissolved in the 15 kilogram 15 grams of benzene. We've just calculated moles Look at our units, they come out grams per mole, which is exactly what I need. That is molar mass. And when we divide this out, we get 776 grams per mole. And with two sig figs, I would call that 780 grams per mole. So we have a very effective and fairly inexpensive way to calculate the molar mass of an unknown solid by using colligative properties. Uh, without this method we would have to rely on some very sophisticated expensive equipment like mass spectrometers. So again, another application of colligative properties.